Vanilla OS 2.0 Orchid finally released, so let's review it and see what's new. Also, join the Penguin by Discord community to be notified of announcements and uploads, ask questions, participate in polls and decisions, and chat with me and the community about Linux, tech, and other topics. Link in the description below. Vanilla OS is a distro focused on a user-friendly and obstruction-free experience. It is immutable and atomic, making it significantly more stable and secure. The first release, Vanilla OS 22.10, was Ubuntu-based and followed Ubuntu's point release cycle, but the new release, Vanilla OS 2 Orchid, is based on Debian SID and follows a semi-rolling release cycle. This release has been in the works for over a year, so now that it's finally out, let's take a look at the new features, because there's a lot to unpack here. Firstly, Vanilla OS automatically updates your system in the background, and you can stop an update if you're in the middle of doing something important. If you have a GPU and integrated graphics, you can use the Prime utility to switch between them. Regarding apps, the primary packaging format is Flatpak, but Vanilla OS also lets you sideload Android apps with WayDroid and Deb packages, all using the VSO subsystem. You can also make a subsystem for any distro and install packages made for that distro using the new APX GUI. Speaking of APX, it used to be the package manager, but now it is a more advanced developer tool, while VSO is the system shell and package manager. VSO also lets you automate things by giving it instructions to execute when certain conditions are met. Vanilla OS also has many security features. Of course, it's immutable, which means the core system which shouldn't be touched is read-only, so you can't nuke your system and malware can't either. It also introduced pull kit policies, which prevent random programs from executing code at administrator level without your consent. Instead of giving access to the OS itself, the terminal gives you access to a mutable subsystem that can be always reset if something goes wrong. And FSGuard will check the core system's integrity, and if the check fails, it will notify you and let you revert to a previous state. Also, if something goes wrong, you can boot into the previous version of your system and do a rollback. Vanilla OS has a new logo which in my opinion looks much better. The new release also ships with another beautiful wallpaper. There's a new tool called Vanilla Image Builder that lets you build custom versions of Vanilla OS with your own configurations, modifications, and programs using a YAML file. There's also some other changes. The installer and first setup have been improved with a new look and more options. Vanilla OS also ships with Linux kernel 6.9 and GNOME 46, which is significantly newer than GNOME 43, which Vanilla OS 22.10 used. There is now a recovery mode in the installer with a terminal, gparted, and access to documentation, a more detailed tour app, and tons of other under the hood changes that I could cover, but that'll wrap it up for the feature review. I actually switched to Vanilla OS, and I must say the installer was really fast and snappy, except the first section when it was installing off the USB drive. For some reason, that was extremely laggy. Also, I had to make my new password in GDM instead of the installer, which I've never seen that before, but it's not a bad design decision in my opinion. And the installation finished in about 20 minutes, compared to Vanilla OS 22.10, which took about an hour to install when I tried it back then, although to be fair, that was in a virtual machine. I will use Vanilla OS for 30 days, and then talk about my experience with it, and whether I will stay with it, or distro hop to something else.
Subscribe if you like my content and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.